I am Jim Collison, and this is the Clifton Strengths Podcast Season 2, recorded on April 11th, 2023. In this Clifton Strengths Podcast Series, we'll look at the Clifton Strengths for Leaders Report one theme at a time, and today is the season wrap. If you're listening live, I'd uh, love to have you join us, especially today in the chat. Uh, there's a link right above me to it. If you're not, if you can, if you don't see the chat on the page you're on, click on that. It'll take you there. Or you can email us your questions after the fact, uh, coaching at gallup.com. And if you're on YouTube and you want to put the comments down below, you can do that as well. Dr. Jacqueline Robinson is our host today. She works as a senior learning and development consultant. Join me for season one of the Clifton Strengths podcast, where we looked at the book, Well-Being at Work, one theme at a time. Jacqueline, always great to be with you. Welcome back. Thank you. We have spent the season uh, thinking about, talking about, not just the Clifton Strengths for Leaders report, but also weaving that in with the Clifton Strengths for Managers, Clifton Strengths for Sales. It was kind of a nice time as all three of those, you know, bing, bang, boom. So it's like to speak. a package deal. Yeah, we put them all out. You know, <laughs> it's six months apart, kind of boom, boom, boom. Yes. And, and I've kind of slowed that down a little bit to kind of consume these. And I felt like we spent the season consuming them. For for those of you coming across this podcast, if you haven't, um, this is the first one and you're like, oh, well, wait a minute, I haven't even listened to one of these. Well, okay, I'll, I'll tell you how and then put it on pause and you could go binge those. But we've made them available in, as a season, uh, as a podcast. So if you just on your favorite podcast app, search Clifton Strengths Podcast, you can find them that way. We have a playlist for them on YouTube. Um, that as we're recording this, you know, we're only about halfway through deploying them. So it's not too late to get on that on that bandwagon. But you can uh, con you can consume them on YouTube if that's your uh, way of doing it. Um, or get, go to gallup.com. Uh, you can sign in to Gallup Access in the resources tab, upper left, choose resources. And then go to, uh, and then search by the theme and everything we've done from all seasons of Theme Thursday plus the two seasons of Clifton Strengths podcast are available there. Um, and you can you can begin to consume those. So if you haven't done that yet, that would be the next thing for you to do. Jacqueline, we we spent a little time on this. Give give some idea if you could your prep for this. I I, I know that's mm -hmm. we didn't put that in the in the notes here, but but I just thought of that. We didn't. For, it's secret sauce <laughs> for you. <laughs> talk a little bit about your prep because uh, I think people get interested in that. You know, it's a weekly, we've recorded two of these mm -hmm. every week live, and then we release them one one a week throughout the year. What was your prep for this? Yeah. Um, I would block an hour of time and then have all reports pulled up. The Well, when I could. So I, I always had the leadership report um, pulled up. And then sometimes I'd have the sales and manager report pulled up as well. Um, and then I just take that time to just think about what this would look like. Uh, as we started to even wrap in the four needs of followers, that became really fun because it's like, okay, now I'm in the leadership report. How do I see the four needs just kind of speaking to me off the pages as I'm looking at this and starting to type up the notes? And then I'd have a, a real good time starting to combine the leader manager or leader sales reports together, thinking about what that would look like. Um, and maybe that's, I think that's probably where futuristic for me came in. I'm naturally a visual person. And so I'd, I'd think about what that person would look like personified if they had this theme and they're a sales leader or they had this theme and they're, you know, a leader of people. So that's, that was really fun because that felt even more creative for me. It's, so maybe it's... for 10 of the themes five to 10 of the themes, I actually use the, the manager and sales reports mm -hmm. as well. Um, otherwise it was just, what do we already know about these themes? What would it look like, et cetera. It was a fun process, especially for themes I didn't have, like, you know, consistency really low, those bottom five to seven. It's like, ooh, this is gonna be fun. Let's see what mm -hmm. this would look like. And I'd really think about that. When you were writing um, these thoughts and these ideas, and you know, we would probably half of the content, you know, you kind of had written out, and then we would vamp on the other mm -hmm. half of the content, spend some mm -hmm. time talking about it. In your mind, as you were thinking about 
other people consuming this? Was there a visual image for you? Like, were you picturing, you know, when we talked about combining the sales report and the leader report or whatever, the manager report, did you have somebody in mind? I mean, what's going on in your brain as you're writing these things out? How do you, how do you visualize that in a way? Yeah. I didn't have anybody in mind. It would just be, what would this person, you know, likely show up as, or what might they be interested in? Um, And that's where I would, I would take it. Sometimes I would pick people's minds if they had that theme really high, just to see, am I on the right track? What else might you add in? And so I'd, I'd be on Microsoft Teams pinging people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did that with one of my colleagues with restorative high because I, I have maximizer high and that one I really wanted some, just yeah. wanted to make sure I was going down the right path. And so um, that would be fun. I might have somebody in mind to go talk to and get more insight from. One of the surprises, we didn't write this in, but it was an, it was immediately apparent in the very first one we recorded of incorporating the four needs of followers, right, out of our mm-hmm. strengths-based leadership work. Um, that's older work and, and and not separated from our current leadership stuff, but it's it's in a different, it's kind of in a different era, so to speak. I've even had someone question us that word followers on YouTube. They were like, really? Do people, you know? And so it comes from a different era, right? I mean, it's 10 or 15 years old at this point. And we, there may be some thoughts on kind of rewording that. You'll hear me, I, I you hear me throughout the season, just refer to it as the four needs. Mm-hmm. Just because, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of thinking through that, trying to be a little more inclusive on it. Um, What do you think, it, it, what do you think that, it's, it's people are consuming this podcast maybe again or for the first time. What, what do you think that achieved for us? Bringing that older work in and adding it into the newer work, how, how would you coach coaches on using that um, with individuals or what, what would yes. you do with that? Yeah. I think it's really helpful. I think it's um, it's been highly necessary, I would even say, in the last three years to help leaders or managers think through that lens of the four needs. Um as they're thinking about their communication style and what it is they're communicating and how are they delivering this information to their teams to keep them hopeful and enthusiastic and um, forward thinking in terms of where the company is going or where the manager or leader is taking them. Um, I found it really useful in leadership team blend sessions where the leaders are coming together and they're thinking about their talent themes. Usually they'll have that team blend session when they're already having their mini retreat or mini summit to think about the year ahead. And so it's been a natural um, segue isn't the right word, but it's been, it's, it's been a pretty natural uh, activity. I'll even say to incorporate the four needs into our strengths based session that we're having, because once they talk about their talent themes, and they look at their team grid and they're talking about how their themes interact together, we can jump right off of that into, okay, now as you're thinking about your strategy for the year and you're looking at your team grid, how are you communicating with hope? What themes are allowing you to do that? How are you communicating with um, stability? What themes are allowing you to do that? And typically there's one where they go, ooh, we weren't thinking about that. Mm -hmm. What can we use to get there as a team? How do we want to frame up that messaging? And then individually, as we go off and we're running our own separate, you know, departments or divisions, how do we want to make sure that we're accounting for that with, you know, my top five or my top 10? So I'm really happy that we added that in because I've naturally seen that that's been a really good element to pull into leadership team blend sessions. Mm. And managers could use it too, but yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's a good reminder that, that those we lead have needs. It's not Mm -hmm. the four things I need to tell you. (laughs) It's Mm -hmm. the four, right? It's not those needs. (laughs) It's not those kinds of needs. I need to tell you it's the four things, you know, it, it, it is, it's for, it's not in it, by the way, it's, it's not complete. It's not the only things it's not, you know. Um, it's just, it's just these four ideas that came out of this work and, and pretty strong, pretty strong, uh, needs as we think of those that we lead. 
And keeping that in mind, right? K keeping in mind that leadership is really about, you know, if you're leading and no one's following, you're not really leading. And so you, mm -hmm. you, to, to bring folks along, right. In thinking of that, at least for me, it's always a great reminder that as I'm leading people, I'm doing exactly that is that I'm leading people. And these are people who have, they're not perfect. They don't, they have, they, they, they have bad days. Sometimes they're terrible days. <laughs> And, and that we've got to account. It's just not always about getting things done. I think Don talked a lot about getting yeah. the work done through people. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's an imperfect system and we've got to, we have to account for that. And I think for me, this season, as we, as we went through those, those needs, I loved asking you, you know, we get to a theme and then we'd say, where do you think the, yes. the four needs fits in? And it fits in all of them. That's the secret, right? We yes. would we would mention a few, right? Um, but it fits in all of them. And but it it bring I think it it re I think for leaders, this should recenter us on the purpose, mission, and goals of what we're trying to do as leaders. Right? Yes. Yes. You know, would you add and anything? that's what motivates and inspires uh yeah. employees and teams to say, Oh, okay, let's go. Yeah. So only uh, a quarter of employees what feel that their manager motivates them in a way, Insp you know, that really inspires right. them to get behind the, the work itself. Yeah. Well, and, and I think the inspiration doesn't come in telling. I think that's the thing. I think mm -hmm. we think leadership is about telling and it's, it's, yeah. it's not, it, it, I mean, yes, there are times we need to do that, right? It needs to say, Hey guys, this is where we, this is where we need to go. This is what we need to get done. There's some of that, right? So much more to that though, in leadership of inspiring teams, to get there on their own, right? Mm -hmm. Margaret asked that question, state those four needs again. So this is out of our strengths-based leadership work. So um, if you go, it, we, we have a book, I think we wrote it 15 years ago uh, called Strengths-Based Leadership. Hope, stability, compassion, and trust is what comes out of that, uh, comes out of that, um, that work. And so we spent some time working through that through the season I, I think i i worked really really hard to say that on every single podcast mm -hmm. as we go through it just to remind you of that um, um as well um we also spent some time um uh, f you and i spent some time maybe thinking about these themes that we have they're middle for us or mm -hmm. they're they're on the bottom right and we as we for you personally when you thought about the work necessary going in, by the way, listening to the podcast and creating podcasts are very similar, right? Just one mm -hmm. is you just get to consume it, but you learned through this. What'd you learn about yourself uh, going through this and thinking about these themes that not, maybe not are in your top 10? Uh, it's that, that deeper understanding and appreciation. You already have it, but you might be eight feet deep. And I felt like I was able to go 12 feet deep with just understanding and appreciation of just the variety of these themes and what they, they bring to the table, especially those bottom five to seven of mine that I don't, um, I don't, you know, naturally gravitate towards. And I love partners that have them. So I think it was, it, it was even more meaningful to go, wow, just the depth of the partners that I have, the, the, the beauty they bring to the table whenever we're working together or being even more curious and going to them. How does this show up for you? How would you, how do you influence people when it comes to this type of theme and learning more? Um, and, and so it was just that it was embracing that natural curiosity of how this can show up and then just getting really excited to go even deeper into the knowledge of these themes. Mm -hmm. um, Cause we say all the time and strengths coaches, you probably agree. You're always learning something with these themes. It's a lifetime of learning more about your own top 10 and how they show up, but then, you know, the themes that you don't have as well. And so that's just as true for us, even though we, we live and breathe it within our, our Gallup workspace. Um, so it was, I really appreciated it. I, I think, um, as you say, as you say those things, it got me thinking about as a resource for coaches using this season as a, as a resource for managers of managers or teams of managers, mm -hmm. right. Who, um, who, when you're doing a team grid may have some gaps, right. May have some theme gaps, may have some 
domain gaps um, may have some uh, may have some strengths. Not may they will have some strengths in that, and they will have some gaps. Let's just be clear about that. And and taking those by theme and going back and have them listening to this podcast and getting some ideas, getting some coaching, getting some thoughts on, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we're, we're, we may want to think about because we don't have consistency in this group or because we don't have any individualization in this group of bringing those two out and assigning some homework to saying, go listen to these and bring some thoughts back. So some ideas in leadership, it could be a tool for leaders, coaches, I'm just giving you some coaching here could get, could be, could be a tool for you to use with those. It's a quick 15 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, go listen to these. I see some things. Go listen to these um, in advance. As you think of Jacqueline, as you think also of ways of using the content, how would you anything else come to mind that you would think about uh, is people either listening or using it as a tool? Yes. Um, if you're working with sales folks, I think this is uh, a, well, oh, I mean, yeah. gosh, yeah. it runs it runs the the whole spectrum of people that might you know, really lean into this. But I do think about sales folks too. I've been working with a lot of um, sales managers um, and this has been helpful. I think even in just my day-to-day -day conversations that I'm having with them as we're, we're going through sessions together of helping them start to map how their talents might be showing up in that, that sales manager position. Um, if you've got managers that are going through a leadership development program, this is fruitful for them too to be thinking about how their their talent themes can support them as managers, but as they start to prepare for um, a leadership position in the the near future or in the future. So those are even two ways that I've been applying everything we've gone through this season and my coaching and my um, sessions that I've been running for strengths mm. folks. Mm. It's been really applicable. It just because we've talked so much about it. It's one of those where it just comes to you and you're like, hey, this is another consideration that we could think of if you've got relator high and you're in a sales position or individualization high and you're a manager. Mm -hmm. um, how might you want to manage this person? What are some questions you might want to ask this individual? Yeah. Get to know them better. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not the... It's not an exhaustive resource, right? There's plenty more for you to, to build on, but it is it does get you started. It's some thoughts for you. I think there's some opportunities even for coaches to develop themselves working mm -hmm. back through this process to say, yeah, where does this fit for me? I think about that. Uh, we had a discussion about sales and it's not about seats, but it's about solutions, right? Mm -hmm. And and being consultative and, and, and yet also, also, um, you know, being a consultant <laughs> at times, right? And how does that fit in? Uh, how does that fit in with the the overall uh, arching theme of what you're trying to do? Not just as a coach, but where are you trying to take teams, right? Where mm -hmm. are you? Where are you trying to get this to fit in a team in a team session? I think one of the things, um, you know, I, I <laughs> I'd actually love to, and it just wouldn't be practical, but I'd actually physically love to have those two reports out while we're doing this and, mm -hmm. and spending some time with an individual walking them through or thinking about both of those, what, whether it be the sales and leaders report or the managers and leaders report and going through those action items and building some plans to really be like, Hey, what do you, yes. not that I can't do that, but maybe I need to find somebody to do that with, but work actually have them. I always pictured as we were doing this, I always picture just having them side by side mm -hmm. <laughs> and in the action items by theme or, or even in a combination of themes, right? Each of those themes has action items and begin to begin to cherry pick out of there. Like, Ooh, I want this one. And I want this yes. one. Let's talk about, let's talk about this. I don't know anything, a anything else uh, uh, on that you'd add. Uh, from from a learning experience. I, by the way, before I before you answer, I love to hear that you've taken this to some of the current work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people think we just create these things and then they disappear. These things have absolutely these things these podcasts yes. has absolutely grown me over the last. Is that even? Did I say that right? Can you say grown me? I have grown <laughs> over the. <laughs> <laughs> I have obviously my English has not grown, but. <laughs> the, the over the last seven seasons of these, uh, eight now, 
um, I've grown a lot. Any, what would you add to that? I'd agree. I've, I've used this season so much. I used our well-being at work season a ton too, because well-being is um, just so, so pertinent. And I, I love that topic, but I, I really used a lot from this season as well. Uh, it's just so helpful. And before we even started the season, I was incorporating four needs into work. I was thinking from that when I had sales leaders or managers, the sales report perspective a, a, alongside their full 34 to just have a, a season where we can fully develop each of these themes from the four needs and from the sales manager and leadership report was just like, oh, it's heaven. But I will say to your um, earlier point, when you were talking about having the three reports out, just from my own prep experience, it is so beneficial. Um, something tends to dance off the paper and, and speak to you when you're looking at them. And I imagine it would feel the same for coaches if they've got their reports in front of them and they're yeah. thinking about those action items or specific statements and what really speaks to them and how they can use that and apply it within their role. Yeah. Yeah. Not a one and done read. Okay. I read that. Mm -hmm. Right. But really a workbook of going through and saying, Hey, we're in this kind of situation. Great mastermind exercise, you know, to get mm -hmm. coaches who are in masterminds together thinking about this. I'd love, you know, to think about it in the context of groups, right. Pull those reports and, and let's spend some time thinking about, um, how we, how we do this. Maybe I'll do some of this around the summit with, with folks spending some time kind of thinking, um, you know, thinking along those lines of just pulling those and setting them side mm -hmm. by side. Um, I've asked out in the chat room uh, for, for stuff, uh, uh, for the individuals listening to us live, what have they learned? You can be putting those, if you're listening live, you can put those in chat. If you want to add them as YouTube comments uh, right below us, you can do that um, um, as well. Later after the fact, I look and approve all of those. And so we'll take that as well. LaShawn says, I've learned that whether I'm in the leadership role or the four needs role, uh, it's it's to my advantage and sets uh, sets us all up as a team to operate continually mm -hmm. in my strengths. Right. Um, you know, Jacqueline, it's a question I get all the time uh, from folks like, do you guys really at Gallup, do you guys really talk about strengths as as like, how much do you do this in the pre-show? we probably had three, three different mentions of themes, right. For each other. We, mm -hmm. It just so permeates. And <laughs> I was just in a meeting the other day where, um, I, we just could, we, we got on that maximizer thing and then everybody was like, oh yeah, this is how I'm going to maximize. Boom, boom, boom. You know, yeah. hitting all those <laughs> in a row. It's so funny how often it comes up here. It's not a just lot. me, right? Does that, do you no. have experience the same thing? On teams and partnerships, it's, you know, if you're struggling, you can call it out. It's like this theme is not not liking, not yeah. liking this right now, or yeah. this theme. My focus is out of whack right now. I need some some clarity or roll, you know, roll clarity here. Mm -hmm. um, it comes up a lot for better and for worse as we just talk it out with each other. Yeah, it's it's it's, so con great. it's constant it's so conversation. Great. Yeah, it is. No, it's constant conversation, which is which is pretty incredible. You almost miss it, like. Not not miss it like oh I miss oh I miss that but miss it in the sense that you stop realizing you're having these super strengths nerdy conversations all the time, mm -hmm. and and people like I, I've been in public and I'm like well that's my and then I'm like oh they don't know anything about strengths <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like <laughs> uh, like what did you just say and I'm like oh that's <laughs> right yeah you don't you don't know yeah. anything um about uh, strengths Lisa. So she really appreciated the four needs were incorporated into the discussion. And Lisa, you might have inspired yeah. that even a little bit. I think early on you said something to me about that. And um, and so I took it. Margaret asked a question. She says, how long will the well-being training uh, podcast be up on the coach's website? Um, so we have no plans to take any of these podcasts down at this point. We Some of the older call to coach sessions from the, the early days 10 years ago, I've been removing years just as we go. Some of that stuff goes out of date. All of the theme Thursday content, six seasons of that uh, will, uh, are staying. And then the well-being stuff will stay as long as, as we need it to. Eventually, it kind of goes out of date. You know, we get older, hair gets grayer. I mean, Jacqueline, you'll <laughs> always stay the same. But yeah, <laughs> this guy gets a little bit older each time. And so um, 
Oh, one of the things, oh, this was kind of fun. So Heather mentioned she loved the interactive strengths grid that we did a couple of times. Remember yes. when we did that? That was super cool. Uh, a good way. So if you if you missed that, that we took I took the Excel version, uh, jammed it into uh, Google Doc. Um, somebody helped me. I should remember who did this. Somebody helped. Uh, Lisa, was that you? Format, format it. So it's, it's, Justin, it doesn't, say, it's Lisa not Justin. perfect. It's not perfect for, for Google Docs, um, but, yes. but somebody fixed that. And then, and I still have that in my Google Docs. We could use that anytime. Maybe we should have done that today. Yeah. Lisa helped fix that. So Lisa, that thank awesome. you for, she, she said, yes, it was her. So thank you for doing that. And, um, and, and then we, we spent some time talking about it. I think one of the things where that helped, right? I mean, it just shows how easy it is to get conversation rolling around this, mm -hmm. right? To get, you know, in this case, we'd have 30 people fill in their top five or 34 or whatever. And you could start seeing some trends and some conversation. That was kind of yeah. fun. Any Anything you you pulled from that time together? I just wanted to show coaches how easy this was to do it. Sometimes we That's overthink great. it, you know, especially virtually. Any thoughts? Yeah. I think it helped us um, also as we were going through the series realize how many maybe maximizers there were. There were a lot of maximizers that were on that team grid or high relator, some woo. And then um, where we all might take a pause and go, ooh, this might be a thing we could learn more about. So depending on what the session was and what the team grid was, it was also helpful in just thinking about our own perspective with that theme that we were, you know, talking about at that point in time yeah. and i think i do remember maximizer and restorative being one where it's like oh we don't have a lot of restoratives on on this particular podcast today but we had already seen in the team grid how many maximizers there were and it was like oh, this makes sense this might be a, a big learning experience for all of us um, and i think we've said that we said that a few times mm -hmm. as we were looking at some of the themes yeah. it's like oh this is going to be a good learning experience for all of us <laughs> so uh -huh. it found its way into the podcast itself as we were going through these themes. Yeah, we didn't do it. I think we did it three or four weeks in a row and then it was, mm -hmm. uh, and we kind of let it go um, at that point, but it was a great way to, you know, um, just to, to highlight the conversation. So it shows how easy it is. Our family and I has, yeah. a, we have a um, shared Google doc that we use that has all the themes in it uh, for yeah. the family. And we refer to that quite often from time to time as a family doc great way to get the family uh, in, involved in it. And so no, that was a ton of fun. Well, um, any, any final thoughts we've got, uh, we want to transition a little bit, but any other final thoughts on season two, let me ask you this question. Cause this how is, do we top this, it? That's my final yeah, thought. What, what do we chat? I don't room, know what we're going to do. <laughs> chat room. Give us some ideas. We've listen. it's April 11th, 2023. We will not start season three until we'll say November. Uh, probably at this point, November of 2023, depending on when you're listening, uh, this, that, that may <laughs> have already come and gone and we may be in season three already, which is the weird part of these podcasts. Right. But, um, chat room, uh, what, what do you think? What would you like to see as a, as a, as a season three topic? We, you and I were just chatting about this, uh, in pre-show pre pre show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I don't, we don't know. There's a lot of, a lot of water to go under the bridge between now and then, but yes, but um, we'll still have. So um, Heather's asking, what, what, what will we do? <laughs> okay. We'll still have some call to coach summits coming up. So that's a yep. big distractor. The summer is coming up. That's a big distractor. We normally slow down and then we'll have some more things coming up. We'll have some more call to coach yeah. things scheduled for you coming up here in the fall. You can still subscribe to the podcast. I would recommend you subscribe to the podcast, even if you listen live and go back and listen to them all again. Mm -hmm. like, um, that that would be a that would be an awesome, you know, um, yeah. So n Heather, not so the the live recordings <laughs> of these not till November. They'll be available one at a time in the Clifton Strengths channel produced for you all the way um, all the way to the end of the year. So you can you can go back and do it that way. Just not live. Right. Uh, one more. Jennifer ga says she gained an appreciation for curiosity and understanding and applying my strengths for the benefit of my community. Ask questions and listen to others reveal their strengths. So that's a really good that's a really good outcome. Um, yeah. So Ken says, uh, how about Clifton Strengths and DEI work? 
uh, uh, that, the, a good thought along those lines. None of these, uh, just because you say them doesn't mean we're going to do it, by the way. Just full transparency. I appreciate that. <laughs> we like the um, ideas. There's um, yeah. a couple of things at the summit that will be on that. Well, uh, yeah. Danny Lee and Amatoga are going to be taking on Clifton Strengths and Culture. Yeah, and there's a little bit of that in the learning series for mm -hmm. our certified coaches. Uh, sure there'll be some, some things coming along. Um, um, uh, Holly says, uh, for me, uh, I watch all the ones I missed because I was working. Yeah, a great opportunity to catch up on that. Heather said, it'd be great if there was possibility to look at themes based on demographics, gender, age, industry. Yeah. So Heather, we've been down that road and that almost, almost always never ends well. In fact, we've pulled, we've pulled back on all those reports just because of the mm -hmm. misunderstandings and misuse of that. When we do that, we, we produced a couple of years ago, we produced a video uh, talking about that. And then we have a demographics report now in the ultimate guide for certified coaches. If you head out there, there's some things. I don't know if we'll ever go back to that. That that is just such a such a double edged sword uh, when we when we do that. If we're not doing it right, if we're not talking about it right, if it's not represented right, all of a sudden you start getting well. All men are now this, or all women are now this, whatever. Well, what about other groups? And you start adding those in, and that all of a sudden get, takes us down a path that we don't want to do. These are individual results and we want to celebrate the individual, right? I mean, we was, these are themes. It, it, it's human nature. We want to roll these things up and compare ourselves. That's human nature. As coaches resist that urge, push that back down and say, no, it's about you, not how you compare, what you do best. Where have you had the most success in those? Um, so it, it is, um, and, and Heather says, yeah, I'm still hoping. It's really helpful for women. Um, not as helpful as, as some have thought. And we've gotten some, we, a couple years ago, we got some really negative feedback about that. So, um, I, I don't see those coming back um, anytime soon. Um, we're going to make a little transition here on this as we think about it, Jacqueline, the summit, uh, because we're going to release this, uh, in, mm -hmm. in, if you're listening to this post June, 2023, you've missed the summit and it's Okay. You can stop or it was next year. listen on uh, if you want. We're going to talk a little bit about, we're going to release this a little bit in a couple reminders, uh, gallopatwork.com. If you're going to join us this year, love to have you either both virtually, which I'm hosting the virtual event, which will be super cool, or uh, uh, the the in-person event. Uh, Jeremy will host that again. And uh, you'll for those, you'll all be here. Lots of folks are coming. Like it's the numbers have been have been moving up and it's super cool. The person in person deadline is May twenty second. So if you're, that is a deadline. <laughs> so get, make sure you get in, and get that done before May twenty second, twenty twenty three. Virtual will be right up until the start of it. Jacqueline, you're spending some time at the summit. I thought since I had you, give yeah. give us a little idea what you're going to speak be speaking on, and and what's the give us a little teaser and maybe even a little value for folks listening. Yes, I get to talk about burnout. Um, how managers or coaches that are coaching managers can start to identify the signs of burnout, how you can even think about rectifying it before it, it turns into burnout. If we, we know what the signs are, we know how to start preventing it and being a little bit more proactive. Um, and then what are the ways that we can start to support folks that are undergoing burnout? So my topic is on essentially burnout and well-being. Mm. Should be no surprise to those that know me. I love it. <laughs> Anytime we can incorporate yeah. well-being, we're going to do so. Um, yeah, and I'm on Tuesday, June 6th from 10 to 11 on site. And then, of course, we will be doing it um, virtual too. So mm -hmm. anyone that's tuning in virtual, we're going to make sure that that Q&A is also open and applicable. And any questions you might have towards the end when we open it up to everybody, um, we'll be able to pull yours in as well. The um, oh, I lost my train of thought there. It, it came. And then, <laughs> you that... you pulled a Jacqueline. You looked up into the air. <laughs> to my strategic thinking, talent, and action. I, I, I was, look up in the air anytime I'm thinking. I was uh, I, I was thinking about that, and then all of a sudden, whoosh! Uh, <laughs> I out, saw it. I saw it. It left the station. It just it just the thought just uh, I feel just left seen. the station. 
Yeah. Um, uh, this year, uh, we're, we'll be doing these interviews in between the sessions that I'll get a chance to lead. There'll be a studio on site, and we'll be doing some fun things associated with in between, trying a few different things this year. And of course, because it's both virtual and in person, we've got to do some things different to get it done. Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't uh, registered already, the virtual, uh, the virtual ticket is available for you if you can't make it to Omaha. And we understand if you can't, I mean, it's crazy times, travel, travel's tough and uh, getting time off and, and being in Omaha. But uh, I've heard from a lot of folks, just one yesterday who said to me, Jim, you know, the only reason I'm coming is to network with people. I mean, listen, the sessions are going to be great and Jacqueline, yours is going to be awesome, but there's this huge desire to meet, uh, to be together again. Yeah. And it's to... like the summer camp of strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, a couple of reminders on the virtual session. Uh, so Margaret asked, will the virtual summit sessions be available? Just like every year that we've done them uh, virtual, they'll be available for 90 days after the summit is over. So they'll be available for you. You can go back and watch those virtual. So if you buy the virtual ticket and you can't actually physically be at them and we create more sessions than you can attend, uh, for those coming in person, you'll get the virtual ticket as well. So you'll be able to go back and watch those. That's a hard 90 days, guys. That's a hard... I, Every year I have to say this. It's 90 days. Don't 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 say this last year was better than most years. I only got one or two. It's like, can you extend that? I'm like, no, actually, we can't. The cool thing is if you attended virtual last year, they're going to open up uh, here uh, shortly. They're going to open up last year sessions for you before the summit. So you can go out and see what happened in 2022. So be watching your if you registered last year and you're going to register again this year, be watching your emails. We get a little bit closer. I think they're going to do that uh, a month out. Uh, we're not mm -hmm. quite there yet, but that'll be kind of a cool reopen those back up. And of course, I would encourage our certified coaches who attended the learning series or didn't attend the learning series. Um, those are available for less than 30 days now at this point, available out there on the registration site for that. So go to your Cliff of Strengths newsletter, the coaches newsletter. Go to that site. If you haven't, if you didn't register, just register again and you can get in there. Those are going to be available for less than 30 days. Then I'll move those to YouTube and we'll actually make those available in the coach's newsletter. I think sometimes, Jacqueline, the more exclusive I make things, the more people actually watch them. But if you provide them everywhere, they just feel like, ah, I don't need to go do it. So sometimes yeah, I feel no like just hiding see. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just, just hiding it. Uh, and like, why did you hide <laughs> it? Well, I just wanted more people to watch it. That, se that, uh... seems, that seems kind of strange. Um, Lisa says, uh, the summer camp of strengths. Yeah. We're going to have a it good feels summer here. Like it. Yeah. it really does. Um, oh, so people. it's, it's yeah. Great. Make it's, sure you bring a sweater. I feel like it's always so cold because it's so hot at that time of year. And then you go into, you know, a facility, you go into the, the conference room or the center and it's just freezing. So make mm. sure you pack like it's winter. <laughs> for when you're in those rooms yeah it's a little chilly <laughs> bring some rain gear it usually we usually get a thunderstorm or two yeah. if you're if you're not familiar with thunderstorms in the midwest we we get those um we, we get those here and so an umbrella or some rain gear might be helpful um, yeah. too as well look forward to seeing you here gallup at work summit 2023 look good uh, jacqueline any other final thoughts before we kind of wrap it for the year ah, still plenty of things you. going on you know follow mm -hmm. us at gallop.eventbrite.com and all that other stuff but any other final thoughts for as sure. we wrap the season we'll figure out something that we want to do for you all um for november yeah well, i i hope you all can attend the summit it is a really great networking event that is very true whether it's virtual or you're on site um, you just feel that sense of strengths-based energy in the room or in the virtual room. So please sign up if you have that opportunity. It is a really good learning experience um, as well as a networking experience. And thank you all for joining us this season. We couldn't have done it without you. Truly, it would just be you know, Jim and I talking and after a well, while, I mean, we would have done, we, it we, we would have uh, <laughs> still like that. We like us. talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> you kept us honest, you kept us on track oh. and you brought in a lot of good learning and, and questions. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more fun when you guys, um, it's so much here. more fun. Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer says, uh, she says she really liked Jacqueline's comments uh, on the lifetime of learning of our strengths. Uh, and that Gallup continues to explore and provide resources for us. And we, we do indeed. This is part of that yeah. resource package 
I, I, um, it's, it's always interesting. I, there seems to be a desire, uh, appetite for just more and more. And I always say, well, have you listened to the podcast? And like, well, I, I mean, uh, no, I'm like, well, have you gone back and listened to what we've done? I mean, there's years of wisdom, not from me, but from the hosts, from the, the other hosts have oh, been on here. Definitely uh, you too. And your words and phrases, we still have to get you to do That's kind of a book. good year for that for me. Yeah, well, don't call us in book. Don't don't put it. Don't say book. You know how I um, <laughs> audio book, audio book. Then well, series podcast series, just an audio podcast yeah. series on that. We we appreciate you guys. Uh, you are very welcome. Um, you know some some accolades out there. Some thanks for for doing that, and uh, thank you guys for coming out and being thank a you, part thank you, thank of you. what we do. And uh, and thanks for joining us. Uh, like Jacqueline said, we couldn't do it without you. We would. It just wouldn't be as good. So uh, we mm -hmm. appreciate uh, we appreciate you guys as well. And thanks for coming out live. Stay close on gallop.eventbrite.com. There'll be some things. I'll, I'll get Jacqueline back. You know, let's get through this summit. We got a lot of things coming up. A lot of things are happening uh, uh, with, with this. We got a lot of things coming up here in June and July. I'm going to take some time off, which I desperately need. And, I love uh, when Jim takes time off. <laughs> it's great. De desperately need it's it this so year. It's so great. But yes. uh, not until not until June. And then uh, we'll come back in the summer and get some things done. We'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available now in Gallup Access. If you haven't been out there in a while, head out to gallup.com slash CliftonStrengths, log in, go to the resources tab upper left, choose whatever you want. In this case, any of the themes and everything we've done, most everything is available out there for you that way. Stay up to date. I mentioned this before. Stay up to date on all the webcasts by following us on Eventbrite. You have to create an account there, but go to gallup.com. No, go to gallup.eventbrite.com. And uh, chew, uh, Bright is B-R-I-T-E on that. Create an account, follow us. You'll get a notification, an email notification. Don't block it, but you'll get an email notification from them whenever uh, we publish anything new. Join us on any social platform by searching Clifton Strengths. The strongest channel right now is LinkedIn. Like what Riley is doing with the Clifton Strengths channel on LinkedIn. If you're not on, if you haven't gone out there and found our page on LinkedIn, just search Clifton Strengths. Lots of great conversation going doesn't doesn't um, um, diminish anything we're doing on the Facebook group. Facebook group can be a little demanding. So the LinkedIn group is still pretty nice. I'm just saying, guys, uh, LinkedIn group's more fun to <laughs> hang out with than our Facebook group. But every uh, platform yeah. has its own culture, yeah. too, and like own style. So yeah. I think that creates a difference. Too. I think it does. I think it does. A little cavalier on Facebook, a little more professional on on LinkedIn. So, um, yeah, it's just my honest opinion. So you can join us on either of those platforms just by searching, um, Clifton strengths. Thanks for joining us today. For those listening live, we'll do just a smidgen of post show. Uh, with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.